Okay. Welcome everyone. Uh, this is chapter 17 and we are going to talk about normal hierarchical models with predictors this time. And so basically uh, to continue what we did it, uh, last week, uh, we are going to, to see the Spotify data sets with, with predictors. Uh, but first, to um, first to, to see that directly, I'd like to introduce you a bit of um, uh, a bit of uh, like the structure of making hierarchical models with predictors. And we here actually use another data set, the cherry blossom. And uh, we use in chapter 15, we have made this complete pooling uh, model in chapter uh, 15 for this uh, data set, Cherry Blossom. So the learning objective for this uh, chapter are build a hierarchical regression model of response variable Y by predictors this time, then evaluate and compare uh, hierarchical and non and non hierarchical models, and then use hierarchical model for posterior prediction. Right. Okay. So as I said, we are going to use this cherry blossom um, data set, and just to um, give you an idea of what's happening here, uh, we can uh, jump into R. Okay, and see a bit of what uh, uh, is inside this, uh, this data set and what we are going to do with it, basically. So now we build um, the same model that we did last week, but we use the predictor. Uh, I don't know if um, somehow to me it could, um, could have been better to continue to spot with Spotify and then maybe introduce with another uh, type of data set. Uh, and so I'm asking to you that what, what would you like to do? Uh, just, I don't know, like have a look at what's happening in the Spotify because we did it last week and so we basically know what's happened. Uh, and uh, this is what changes if we use uh, uh, the predictors with Spotify and then uh, talk to, uh, of another data set or you would like to follow the, the, the book, uh, basically. Uh, you bring up a good idea. Yes, um, if, if you think of continuing with the Spotify data set is useful. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah. So basically what we did it last week was doing this hierarchical models. Um, and I don't know if you, uh, just to little recap, we did a complete pooling, no pooling and partial pooling. And we said that this partial pooling was the best type of model. We had this, that, set which was Spotify okay and we wanted to basically uh, catch the popularity of a, of a song uh, but um, uh, um, as we mentioned that songs may be influenced by the artist okay because uh, one artist do more songs, others can do less than the, than the previous artists and so on. So the popularity of a song might be influenced by the artist, the, 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 which artist uh, has many songs. So without predictors, what we did it was uh, uh, this type of formula inside the model. So popularity and then uh, this um, uh, set the the intercept, the, this is a, a type of model, okay, that it's, it's randomly used um, with artists, with, with um, uh, another covariate, okay, sorry. And then we, uh, we use this uh, uh, 
um, to calculate the covariance, okay? And we put this in the model, and that was the difference uh, from the complete pooling and no pooling. So partial pooling uh, was, uh, it's grouped, but not totally grouped, okay? Uh, but we haven't used any predictors, okay? So now what we are going to do is uh, uh, that we are going to add the predictors to this model. So now uh, we want to have a look at the densability instead of the popularity of a song. Uh, and this will be like uh, um, uh, influ uh, guided by the valence uh, and the gender, uh, and so the uh, obviously there is uh, this is by the artist, okay. And so what we do, uh, we select, um, okay. Um, The basically, we select the, again the Spotify. We select some uh, specific uh, predictors. What's happening here? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, we use this. Um, um, columns, so these predictors, and then we put them, uh, we, we can even have a quick look of what's, what, what's in there. And so just to see how this gender balance uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the balance grouped by artists changes the, uh, the visualization. So as you can uh, see, okay. Okay, the first one is this one here. So we have a box plot. Uh, and so we have the gender gender and the densibility. And so we look at the, the variability of the densibility by the, the gender, uh, like, I don't know if it's pop, R&B, rap, or rock, and so on and so forth. Then we have a look at the... Um, like the correlation or the linear relationship between uh, uh, densibility uh, to valence. And so we see that there may be a sort of like a sort of linear relationship. But then if we have a look uh, at the valence uh, group it by artists, we see that we cannot catch it exactly what's happening. So we have a lot, many, um, you know, things that um, intercept uh, of different levels. So our model here is, a, again, a standard GLMR, uh, and we use this formula, densibility, balance, and gender, and artist. Uh, again, it's a family Gaussian. Here we haven't done, uh, you know, the density and everything because we did it before. Even if it's in, in this case, it's, we have sensibility, so we could even do that. But so uh, we continue assuming uh, a Gaussian distribution. And then we set the prior, uh, the, um, we have the prior intercept. We have uh, uh, an, um, a footer prior, and, and we have the prior aux, which is the exponential. Then the, this is what we already put in the other model as well. Um, but uh, you can, as you can see, there is a, um, uh, a double prior here, which is uh, uh, changes just the uh, the mean value. So this is the centered, and this is um, varies within the um, the densibility. So the the response variable. 
And then we have the prior covariance, uh, which is the um, covariance matrix that we uh, talked about last week because we have more than one variable. So we need to. So the, basically, the, the procedure is actually the same, just we uh, add uh, different things, okay? So to make, to put evidence on the differences. Uh, and then we run a, a, a second model, uh, which is, uh, again, uh, slightly different because we want to look at uh different intercept so here we set the intercept to be one while here the intercept is based on the valence and grouped by artists just as the same as the same reasoning that we got here okay so we want to catch this uh difference in, in within the intercept and and uh, see what's happening the model is uh, what is it is exactly the same as the, the one above, exactly uh, nothing changes. So if we now jump, uh, because it takes a bit for um, running. So if we have a look at uh, the, uh, basically here, what the, the chapter says, uh, we can see that uh, uh, so um, we we could do different things, okay? So, but in this case, so this is our model two, which is considers the valence uh, by artist. Uh, both models uh, um, having done uh, um, uh, the the checks. Uh, um uh, and the um, uh, pit, uh, posterior prediction check the authors conclude the author the author concludes that model one seeing that this is uh, substantially simpler and the two models are uh, substantially similar so it might be suggested to use model one so the one which is not grouped by valence. So it doesn't take consideration basically grouped by artists, okay? So it doesn't take consideration of the um, varying intercepts. Uh, in this case, the varying intercept is uh, varying by valence. So in the cherry blossom uh, example at the very so on on the previous part of the chapter they explain these things of the the body intercept uh, and so we might go back there to to have a look at what's happening but basically this is the 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 conclusion of the thing so the densibility here is well uh, represented by normal that we have chosen at the end so the authors mentioned this uh, model one okay so this uh, family gaussian with and we have a uh, prior intercept uh, centered to 50 and then a centered uh, intercept uh, to zero uh, because as you can see here uh, the what is it model one okay um we basically consider our predictors uh, as to be uh zero and one okay we set one gender uh which is latin gender uh if if, if it's latin it's one and zero otherwise and so our model basically takes consideration of different uh, uh predictors but as well as a uh, intercept, which is um, uh, um, attached to uh, the value uh, of the number of artists. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, these are called global 
uh, coefficients and they basically reflect the assumption that the relationship between densibility, valence, and gender are similar for each artist. So we take consideration that they are similar. Uh, and yet the artist-specific intercepts, beta zero uh, sub zero j, assume that when holding cost constant a song balance and gender, uh, some artist songs tend to be more danceable than other artist songs. Okay, so these two predictors are, are effectively influencing the response variable. Okay, this other model basically does the same but focus on the valence by artists. And it is slightly, slightly little uh, more complicated. Uh, and see the um, simulation results. Uh, you can see that they are quite similar. And so the other conclude that model one uh, is suitable. It's the most suitable, suitable one. If we have a look at the uh, estimation, we can see that the valence is positive. So increasing the instability um, of one unit on average increase the balance, uh, increasing the, the, the densibility of one unit. Oh, uh, sorry, a change of density, uh, on, uh, um, uh, a ch uh, on average change of densibility, uh, uh, which is an increase or decrease. Um, in this case, uh, it's uh, increasing uh, for any unit change, okay? And then, uh, uh, because it, it is positive, and then so we have in particular uh, the gender Latin, uh, again, positive, and all the others, uh, because we set the effects to fix it, uh, and all the others are uh, positive except RMB and rock. So they basically, th these are like negative values. Unless you want to. Uh, say something about that, maybe. So when those coefficients are negative, that I'm I'm trying to understand. That means that those genres, those songs are less danceable than the global average. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm assuming that yeah. Okay, thank Basically, you. Basically. Yeah. Uh But basically, they are less. Yeah, they they are uh, influencing negatively, negative, uh, negatively the densibility. Uh, yeah, maybe compared to the others, well, general lighting, pop, R and B. Okay. So then if we have a look at some uh, Monte Carlo simulation areas, uh, we can see that the, uh, as we consider this uh, um, uh, the distance from, from uh, the intercept, uh, we see that the uh, Latin and pop, um, Song uh, gen of songs are uh, you know uh, um, positives while basically replicating the the result of the estimation here. RMB is negative. Uh, rap is quite uh, positive, while rock it's negative. So. Uh, that's it. This is everything, basically, what I wanted to, to say. Then you can, uh, like, modify and adjust the model, setting new, uh, if you want to have a look, like, specific uh, 
uh, songs uh, and see uh, instead of uh, um, um, basically what's happened, how how the estimation changes, and which one is belonging to the the, the gender. Okay, uh, what else? Then we look at the posterior predict prediction and we have with this new data and we look at the artist uh, in particular, uh, some gender, and then we see, uh, we set the balance to 80, 60, and 90. And so we can see that these three artists Within uh, among these three artists, the the one which has the, the highest level is Elliot. The other one is um, you know uh, this Camilo, and then we have Beats. So um, it says that uh, the uh, um, sensibility um the, there is something that exceeds the maximum densability level okay if you are paying close attention you might notice that a flow in our model so this is a consequence of using a normal to model a response variable with a limited limited range that, uh, set to zero to an, an hundred uh what is it Um, because basically, uh, so uh, we said the normal assumption was good enough here, but we might consider replacing it, say, with a beta, for example. Okay. So this is basically Spotify. Then what's happened with the, um, uh, what is it? Yeah, with the cherry blossom, uh, we can see that. This uh, cherry blossom, um, um, I can't run the models because actually they they quite uh, so long, they take, they take a long time. Uh, but this cherry blossom sample, so we have seen it in uh, chapter uh, 15 when we introduced the hierarchical models. And uh, it's made of two uh, 52 observations. 36 runners uh, and um, it basically specify the, the running times uh, and name it net uh, and uh, there is a specification day age which ranges from 50 to 61 and the data set it, it's within a certain time frame uh, years from uh, 1999 to 2008. Here in this first very, uh, because we do basically uh, complete pooling, okay, we don't do the other, we start doing a complete pooling, uh, grabbing the, the model that we made in chapter 15, where is it, this complete pooling uh, model, this one here, and um, so basically, uh, you can like speculate and, and do many type of different analysis. Okay, we now put the time frame on a side, and we just consider uh, the runner, uh, which they are they are identified by ID. They're all different. They have an ID. They age. They uh, time. Uh, they running times. Okay, so if we run this uh, data set, we omit some uh, na because the uh, this net uh, variable uh, contains some na, so we don't need it. So now this is it. This is just the add, uh, but as I said, we have about uh, hundred and eighty five because we omitted some na. Uh, observations and so this is what it looks like uh, we can even have a quick look so this is what uh, they 
these are the runners, okay? They are not ordered. This, they, this is the ID, but they are factor reordered by the net uh, value. I made a mean, a grouped by runner made a mean, to, to have a, uh, okay, a visualization of which one, so is, is, this is running time. So I think the, the, the lowest values is the better. So this is the faster, uh, while this is the, the, the slowest. Okay. Uh, if we, what we want here is understanding the viability within runners and they uh, running times. So if we have a quick look at the viability, okay. And now I have reversed the axis so this way. I may scale Y reverse so that we have the, the, the 60 here and 120 there. So the first one here on top is the one that does faster. Uh, but if you go along the line, so they are all runners, you see that there is a, a set, um, set, so some of them, uh, or, or let's say most of them, uh, have a quite um, similar, in some senses, um, range of variability, while others have a, um, some spikes. Okay, they, they are quite, you know, the variability is more evident. So we would like to understand this. Uh, we have a look at the density just of the running time, and we see that we have a, like a sort of B model. How do you call it? It's a sort of normal B model. What would you say? Yeah, maybe a normal distribution, but as you are hinting at with the previous data set, with the bimodal data, perhaps something more like a beta distribution might be useful if possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I mentioned that we don't do like uh, no pooling partial, but this is no pooling. Okay. This density, as we saw, as we saw last, last week, we haven't grouped uh, in any manner. Okay. So, here, the running time is no pooling. Uh, and so we can see clearly the, the, uh, how the distribution of the running time looks like. If we do a bit of grouping, like for example, by age, because we are interested in understanding this time variability, but if, if this is influenced by the age of the runner. Okay, so we see that it's quite different. They, they, they are quite different. Okay, so this is by age. Uh, this is grouped by age. Uh, and it, it does change again if I do uh, this um, by, uh, by runners, for example. If I do this by runner, now this is the, okay. You can see that uh, it, it, it is still uh, quite different. So that there, there is a, some of them are not, uh, uh, they have a very tight variability other spread more along the, the axis. The last one, the by runner, um, just to try to understand the terminology, is that the no pooling setting? Okay. No pooling, uh, no pooling is, is this one here. Okay. No grouping. Uh, uh, pooling, uh, will be pooling, will be grouping. So it means grouping by, in this case, runner or age. This is pooling. Partial pooling, 
it's uh, an average between the two. Okay, so you like, uh, uh, as we did it uh, for Spotify, partial pooling was that uh, we, we had the popularity by artist, but we didn't consider, so it, uh, basically it's between the two. Okay. Oh, okay, so thank we, you. Yeah, here we use complete pooling uh, regression model. And so this means that our response variable, which is now running times, the net, uh, this one here, the net, and the response variable, uh, sorry, the predictors will be the age. Okay, because we like, to, basically we like to understand the association uh, between running times and age of the runners um, to understand the, the variability of these running times. Uh, our model is always the same type, okay? So this is not new. Uh, we jump directly into the complete pooled model, model which is the same one uh, in, that we did it in chapter 15, okay? We use a family Gaussian and we do net age. Okay, this is the formula, net age. Now we do family Gaussian and then we have this uh, three, uh, the prior intercept, the prior and the prior aux, which is this, uh, the prior intercept uh, centered, the prior uh, and the aux. Okay, so if we run the model and we have a look at the, the summary, we see that we have uh, uh, 75, uh, about 75 uh, the, uh, uh, as, as the intercept. And that means if we don't, if the age is zero, which is not reasonable that the age would be zero, okay, the, the running time, uh, the estimation of the running time is 75. Uh, but, uh, okay, so this is not uh, uh, very, so in reality, it's not to be considered, okay. But uh, in case we can consider the fact that the age is positively associated with uh, each, uh, on average, each unit uh, change of, um, running time okay so uh, our model will be this this uh, of this kind okay if we plug in the values 75 and the uh, our pre predict our co the coefficients of the of our predictors okay uh, now if we want to vary the intercepts just as the same as in spotify we, we buy the intercept, okay, because uh, having a look at um, the um, running time on age, we see that they uh, might be like somehow, how do you, um, okay, there, there is a, there could be a sort of, um, you know, for me, they, they grouping, okay, somehow. They are uh, some, some um, group of age vary uh, within a certain range of running times, um, while others, uh, for example, someone that has 50, it can be identified to be 75, running within 75 or 95. While another one at 55, for the runners that we got, we have a varied uh, different times. So we like to understand why, basically. Uh, and 
basically what is this uh, investigate a bit more. So selecting the estimations of these two. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know the model summary. But anyway, uh, basically we uh, update, uh, I don't need it uh, to run the model now. So uh, setting the, the estimation, okay, the model summary, the, the first two, uh, the coefficients and the, the intersect. We then um, can update the model with prior to defaults. So we have the posterior, uh, and we can uh, uh, have a quick look at what's happening here, setting uh, with a geoma blind, uh, the intercept and the slope. So we can see that uh, this is the, the, the posterior prediction of the complete pooling, the first, the first model. So we can see that they are somehow following uh, a relationship, linear relationship, okay? But they still have some variation uh, at the um, at the stream. So what we do now is considering the uh, stratification by runner. This is uh, the formula. Uh, this is a hierarchical model, uh, and so this is our predictor. And this is without predictor. So we can we could run this model this way. And this is what we did the last week without the predictor. Now, if we do this, we run it with predictors. And this time, the age is predicted. But it's linked based on the runner. OK? So we have family Gaussian. And these are our uh, priors. And again, we have the covariance. So we consider the variance uh, of the couples, of, of each couple by runner. Okay, because we like to understand the variance. This is the same prior PD2, true. Uh, and then if we have a quick look, this is, uh, we add the pitted draw. Uh, and then have a look at the um, by draw uh, the runner age uh, running time uh, and so the values by draw so you can see that the, the variation is slightly different, so it's, you know, it's different. Within simulations. And so, uh, again, as we did before, if we group as a pooling thing, um, we group by draw, Well, we have 100 draws. We see that our uh, distributions is quite similar. They, they're quite similar uh, within each other. Now they group nicely. And uh, this is our prior. The, the look at our priors. And so, uh now going to have a look at the posterior we update our model one prior with uh, prior pd false we have a, a summary and we see uh, the specification of the model and then some like um it can be seen very well. So uh, things within the the two, uh, and then basically we can do uh, all the same thing. Let Let's go back to the uh, to the chapter, and maybe 
Um, nice to see. Okay, this is uh, Okay. Uh, 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 global relationship, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, so we see that uh, in, the, in the tidy summary, uh, we have this uh, uh, positive um, influence of the age. Uh, and uh, when we said the effect to fix it. And so if we plot, uh, as we did it before, so what we did before was this. Okay, this one here. No. Uh. Okay, now, Okay, now you can see that this is the posterior. It's a bit more like the well defined. Okay, uh, for global model lines. So basically, this is. Uh, um, There is an 80% chance that the typical run tends to slow down somewhere between 1.02 and 1.58 minutes per year. Because the data set is by year, we didn't consider it, but they are uh, in somehow group it by year okay so the fact that this range is entirely and uh, comfortably above zero provides significant evidence that the typical run tends to slow down with age okay this assertion is visual supported by 200 posterior plausible global model lines below because uh, this is should be reversed, axis reversed, because this, the, the lowest, um, okay, so shorter times are better, you are faster. So going uh, forward with age, so you take, it takes more time for you to, to do the same uh, running bit. Okay, so we 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 might uh, so it's a confirmation uh, that what we talk. So in uh, real world, then uh, we can like uh, adjust and modify the things differently, uh, and basically we can uh, group. Um, can do analysis by group specific relation grouping uh, specific relationships uh, and so uh, basically adding a weight to our intercept and so um, here we can see that uh, looking by runners if we select um, if I look at two runners in particular, we can see that one is basically, they have a positive influence, basically one influence the other. Um, so 
the median intercept of 30, the median intercept of 13.8 minutes versus uh, 6.7 minutes difference. I, I, I mean, I will run in summaries. Okay. So we have a look at this uh, uh, difference. Uh, runner four seemed to have a, a slower baseline speed than runner five. Okay, so this is fine. So at any shared age, we would expect that runner four to run roughly 24.1 minutes slower than runner five. Okay. So looking at those confidence yeah. intervals um, in the previous table, Runner four, uh, 15.3, 46.3. Runner five, negative eight, uh, and 21. Yeah. So for runner four, we have, as the previous section said, as you were talking about, has the practical significance of being positive. But for runner five, that confidence interval contains zero. Uh-huh, yeah. So um, I was just wondering if that's going to play a role here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, okay, if we run under the posterior plausible models for four and five, for example, because then they look at the differences, then they, then they do another difference between uh, other two runners. Uh, so we can see that even the simulations uh, release a different results. Uh, and so as well, we can conclude that there is a difference between the runners, even if they have the same age. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, for example, this runner goes forward within age and has a certain uh, running times, while this other runner go as well forward within age, but as a completely different level of uh, running times. And so then uh, you can do other type of analysis. So it's called within and between group variabilities. And just to go a bit more, because we have like less than 10 minutes, uh, you can have a look um, at the... Um, at the model one, but the effects are not fixed now, but run by pairs. And so they are grouped by runners, and you can see the estimate, but it's still uh, positive. And so here you need to consider the, uh, the two um, variabilities. And this that uh, for, um, the, this difference between um, runners account for roughly eighty six and sixty two uh, percent, which is the majority. And so um, of the total variability in racing time, um, okay, uh, and so you can consider that the, the variation within runners, uh, it's um, um, quite important. Uh, and so this is the bit of the varying intercept that we use in the Spotify. And here, for example, they have a look at some uh, selected runners, four, five, uh, 20 number uh, with ID 29, and we can see that they have a different uh, type of um, running times. And so uh, these are the different intercept things that we saw before, and you can build up your model with the covariance matrix as we did it. And so have a look at the various differences. Um, going forward, uh, just to um, we use the decomposition of the covariance inside the model, uh, and then 
uh, okay, here is an interesting bit about uh, the mathematics of the of the um, of the decomposition of the covariance model, and so uh, this is quite interesting. Um, we use uh, um, like uh, individual uh, specific. Uh, we define in three priors, uh, and so we use uh, a regu regularization of our parameter, in particular, this eta, uh, which has to be greater than, set to greater than zero. This is the LKJ prior model uh, on the co correlation matrix. And so the um, R depends on the correlation rho between the group specific intercepts. But to just to, to give you an idea of what's happening here is this that uh, if our uh, parameter is less than one, okay, so we have uh, a different. Um, uh, um, to, okay. And so uh, if it's equal to one, the model is uniform. If it's greater than one, we have a prior, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, quite normal. And our row is uh, approximately zero. And so basically we use this gamma and Drickle uh, distributions to we could basically accordingly utilize joint symmetric Drickle prior with concentration of our parameters, uh, which is n the beta, which is uh, equivalent to express um, by a beta. Uh, and we can do the same reasoning with uh, the parameters uh, delta. As you can see, so a bit of theory, but then uh, running the model, this as the same as before. This is model two, the last model that we got here. We, we did model one. Uh, and then, so model two takes very long time. Uh, they have four chains uh, and it's it's very heavy. Takes, takes, takes a lot, a very long time. So here we have uh, uh, we don't have a prior uh, set to zero. Okay, let's let's go to model one. Okay. So this is uh, the, uh, exactly the same. So this is our specification of the uh, the priors for the center intercept and the uh, and our betas. But now, what changes here? I don't see. Um, okay, this is uh, model one and this is model two. Um, okay, so can you see that model two, we are very, uh, I'm, I'm a bit tired, but we are very intercept. So what changes is here. So basically, yes. as we did with Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. 
So basically, we are added this uh, uh, age uh, with um, by, with with the different runners, and so you run this model and have a look at the summary. Uh, basically, uh, there is um, like a bit of uh, um, still positive. Having a look at the fixed effect with confidence intervals, we don't have uh, zero crossing things. Uh, and um, if we have a look at a quick visualization here, uh, we still see that if we focus within two runners, we can catch that they have uh, uh, a prediction that is still different within each other. Okay. Uh, okay. And then finally, uh, we evaluate these models with this PP check and we, we compare the complete pooling, uh, the first one that we start, then the model one without age, and then the model two. And so these are the three uh, models. And so we see that uh, uh, let's drop the complete pool model from consideration in choosing between model one and model two. Uh, and so having a look at these two, we can see that the uh, mean absolute error it's lower for model two, which is this one here with the age. Then you can do some visualization and looking at a uh, further comparison evaluation of the model with the loo function, just as the same as before, release a consistent uh, things. And then uh, again, they do a little again a, a comparison within two runners. And then you can uh, like uh, use the functions to see what's happened. So this type of data is called longitudinal data, um, and that's it. So this it might be interesting to have a look. This base longitudinal R package. It might be worth to spend a bit more time on the evaluation of the model, but you know it's very it's an intense chapter. Yes, it was, and thank you for walking us through both of the examples and showing us, um, in addition to all the topics, how we could vary the intercepts and improve these models for the predictors. Thank you. Thank you.